Hello and welcome back and today I want to tell you guys about how to convert your physical PC into a virtual PC that can then be installed and deployed from your QNAP NAT. Now a few things straight off the bat. Occasionally throughout this video you are going to hear the odd drilling noise, the odd annoying kind of rumble and unfortunately that is because the building I'm in is subject to refurbishment. It's not my fault, I didn't do anything, I promise, hands in the air, but you will hear that noise in the background occasionally and as much as I try to drown it out, unfortunately, it's going to be very hard to combat it. But what we're going to do now is I'm going to talk you through exactly how to create that virtual equivalent of your desktop PC. But before we go there, let's talk about why you'd need a virtual machine. Well, first and foremost, businesses these days are getting more and more mobile and with improvements to both internet and network technology, it's actually quite attractive to have a single virtual computer that can be accessed anywhere, be it on a commute on the way to work, a coffee shop, um, anywhere in the world, overseas, doing a shoot, anywhere you need to have your PC accessible, it is definitely attractive to have a virtual equivalent rather than dragging around a big system. On top of that, it gives laptops and low resource systems like tablets the ability to still take advantage of and access far more powerful computers. As long as you've got a steady enough internet connection, you can connect to a high-end gaming rig from the most basic budget tablet so a number of you that do uh, post-production and photo video editing can have a PC stationed anywhere in the home or the office that's a high-end, multiple graphics card enabled PC, and that, therefore that can be remote accessed anywhere in the world. You just need to make sure you upload your created footage. Now, the reason I want to talk about a QNAP NAS today is QNAP NASes are some of the most powerful commercially available NASes in the world with additional support for graphics cards and more. And with a huge range of Xeon and Intel Core i3, i5 and i7 powered NASes. In fact, the NAS we're using today is an i3 four core eighth generation processor NAS. The result is that this is a powerful NAS that once we export our um, local PC onto as a virtual equivalent, it may in some ways perform even better than our local machine, but I'll get to that later. First, let's talk about all the parts we're going to need to create a virtual version of our physical PC and install it on the NAS. The first thing we're going to need is a real copy of Windows. Right now, I'm running a Windows 10 Pro computer. And let's open up my computer here. And this PC is running a dual core i7 processor, 6th generation and 16 gig of memory. I'm going to export this onto the QNAP NAS. Now, the hardware is going to be different on the PC that we are on the NAS that we're utilizing and therefore there's no guaranteeing that our virtual equivalent of our desktop PC is going to run as smoothly. It's going to be near enough impossible to guarantee that the NAS you're going to utilize is going to be the same hardware as your PC but just always try to get a NAS that's similar because Windows 10 does have its own internal migration tools so that your virtual hard disk should carry over onto the virtual NAS platform quite easily and therefore still be deployable. Now the next thing you're going to need to use is this tool, Disk2 VHD. This is a, a semi-official tool from SysInternals that converts your physical PC and its build into a Hyper-V blob. It's a, an area of storage, a, a virtual hard disk that we're going to export onto the NAS. This is a free tool, just a simple Google of that will tell you, hopefully there's a link in the description too, and NAS compares. And this is the tool you're gonna to need. It's quite lightweight, and it arrives in zip form, which you can then deploy. The next thing you're gonna need is to make sure your NAS is an AMD or um, Intel-based x86 64-bit processor that's four cores. That's because you're going to need to make sure you've got enough hardware on the NAS allocated to the virtual machine, but also still have enough memory to support the NAS while it's in operation. So do make sure you've got um, a processor of that caliber and you're using enough memory. 
the next thing you're going to have to need is to make sure not only have you got enough memory to run the NAS, but also to run the virtual machine. I recommend between 2 and 4 gig of memory, depending on the machine you're creating a virtual copy out of, and just make sure you've got at least 2 gig to run the QNAP's own OS and application in the background. Next, make sure you're utilising the tool from the NAS in question. In this case, Virtualization Station 3 from QNAP is the tool we're going to use. At the moment, you can see the previous virtual machine that I was using. This was a copy of Windows Server that I dedicated two of the four CPU cores to and two gig of memory to run a virtual machine of Windows Server. I'm shortly going to delete this virtual machine, but this is to give you some idea about what it's going to look like when it's done. I'm going to delete this virtual machine and create a brand new one later on, and I'll talk you through the steps after the creation of the virtual equivalent of my physical computer. The last thing we're going to need is a target drive. And what I mean by that is a drive that we are going to export the creation of our physical Windows computer onto. Because once you create the virtual image, you can't store the virtual image on your physical computer. It doesn't work that way because you're going to create a physical copy of this computer. So you need to send that co this virtual copy you're creating off of the computer to an external drive. Either connect an external drive like I've done here, and I've connected this via USB 3.1 Gen 2, or you can use standard USB or whatever, or mount the NAS as an external drive. If you don't already know how to do that, just make sure you've used the, the tool in question from the NAS provider to find it over the network. In the case of QNAP, QFinder Pro, which you've probably never used since the day you set up the NAS, and then click the option for Network Drives. Click Network Drives, and it will mount all of the drives on the NAS that have been labelled as shared. Those mapped network drives will then allow you to search for um, a folder to copy and create mapped onto the NAS. So in the case here, I'm creating a mapped network drive. And these drives here are all of the shared folders on that QNAT NAS. All I need to do then is select one and make it mapped onto the NAS. Right click, I will see an option with which to map this drive onto my local PC. If we have a look down here, map network drive, we map it maybe on the letter N, click finish. And now on the PC, we can see that folder that's on our QNAP NAS is now network accessible. I can access that drive as I would the folders on my local machine. There's the folder there. So now you either use an external drive to send this virtual PC we're creating over to or send it to the NAS. But I recommend that you send it to an external drive connected locally via USB, Thunderbolt or more. Because it will be faster than trying to export your virtual machine onto the NAS over the network. Which typically will have a limitation speed of around 100 megabytes. Whereas a locally connected drive will give you two, three, four hundred megabytes and higher, depending on the speed of the external drive you connect. So now we've got all of the things we need to begin our uh, external uh, creation of this local machine into a virtual disk. So once you've downloaded disk 2 vhd mentioned earlier, double click the disk 2 vhdexe for, um, ex executional file. It will open up this program here. This program here, Disk2VHD, is the tool we're going to utilize to create the virtual copy of our physical PC as a Hyper-V uh, virtual disk. The first thing you need to do is select where you want this externally created drive to live. As mentioned, I'm going to be utilizing that external drive that I've connected. Double click the external drive. I recommend creating a subfolder inside so you don't lose track of the virtual machine. And then from there, name the folder. In this case, by default, it will be the name of your PC that you created back on day one, but you can name it wherever you like. Then from there, click Save. 
and this is where the external drive, uh, the external virtual machine once created when it's exported will live. The next thing you need to do is select the storage that's going to be used in this. Now make sure if you're using an external drive to untick that external drive because otherwise you're not going to be able to export onto it and it will be an illogical save. So make sure you untick that drive. But the rest of the drives typically could click all of them because these drives will be your local C drive where your OS lives. There may be a partition where there's recovery software to reset your PC back to manufacturing settings and maybe a backup or snapshot drive. But I recommend clicking all of the drives on screen because chances are your OS needs them to operate. The next thing to remember is the amount of storage that you're going to need. As you can see, even though my C drive is 476 gigabytes, I'm only utilizing 334 gigabytes, which means there's enough space for it to fit onto my external SSD. So make sure you've got enough space on the external drive or mapped network drive to export your PC's virtual version onto before proceeding. Another thing before we click create to bear in mind is the following. This is going to take a heck of a long time. This is going to take ages. So if you do this, bear in mind you're going to have to leave your PC or laptop running with the connected drive, not in hibernation, just always on without standby or a screensaver or any kind of energy saving resource for at least 10 to 12, maybe even 24 hours, depending on the complexity of your PC. Also, right now, I'm using screen recording co to capture software. Consequently, it's going to take even longer on my PC than it is on yours. I've already done this before using this PC, and it took over 12 hours to complete. So I recommend doing this maybe in the evening before you go to sleep, or maybe when you get home and then leave the PC or laptop on the side untouched for the job to complete until the following day. For you, what I'm going to do is start the virtual backup, uh, the virtual virtualization of my physical PC in the background and fast forward to the completion of it when it's finished creating this file which we're going to use to create the virtual equivalent of our physical PC. So let, I, let me click create. And from this point, it's now going to start the formalization and initialization of the creation of the virtual computer um, equivalent of my physical PC. As you can see, it's already stating it's going to take 13 hours. Now, this number is going to jump about quite a few times. And of course, because I'm using that capture software, it's going to take even longer for me. I'm not going to rush it or wait around. And let's fast forward to the completion of this virtual disk being created. Right, so welcome back. Plenty of time has passed my end. Originally, it took about 28 hours for this VHD to be completed. But it is also worth highlighting that since then, things such as coronavirus and self-isolation has kicked in in the UK. So I never got to finish the first part of this video until quite a few days later, as you can see. So for now, what I've got is I've created that VHD file, just like I said I would with this 2 VHD. And from here, we've got a couple of options of how to proceed. I mean, we are going to be utilizing the QNAP's own virtualization station software and I have already created the virtual machine here on the desktop and I will show you exactly how I did it. But it's worth highlighting that Disk2 VHD will output a virtual hard disk for you to utilize and a number of you may wish to utilize another means of creating a virtual machine. And one of them, of course, let's shut this VM down or shut down, is to use a VMDK, often associated as VMware. A VMDK is a version of a VHD file that creates a virtual um, virtual machine image from a virtual hard disk image. Now, on the key I've put this great guide here together for you. And again, I'm not going to say it's user friendly, but for those of you out there that want to utilize a VMware image, you can utilize it here. Alternatively, you can take advantage of some of the conversion tools in included with Virtualization Station 3 to convert images into, uh, images into other images. What I've done for the course of this video is I've converted uh, that VHD image there into 
a, um, a, a normal traditional ISO image that we can use on this device. Now I've already set up the VM here, but to show you guys exactly how to create it from scratch, we're gonna um, go into cre uh, import VM, and then from import VM, we select here, and then select the virtual machine image that I created earlier, which we've already uploaded onto the NAS from that external drive as seen here. If we make our way into the download folder there, we can scroll down and find the image in question. It's inside here, and there is our VMX image that the conversion tool created. Alternatively, you can utilize the QNAP's own virtual uh, image uh, converter tools and convert that into an ISO if you so choose. There's lots of different ways in which you can do it, and there's lots of different ways you can create an ISO image and a virtual image as well. So whichever one of those best suits your need, do check out my other videos about the difference between them. But whichever one best suits you, all you need to do is put in the name of the VM, say the different kind of VM. I would recommend a Windows VM. From there, of course, enter the amount of memory you're gonna utilize. I recommend two gig of memory, and of course, the number of cores, at least two cores for any VM. And from there, you then can install, uh, maybe put on a Windows image. I recommend downloading perhaps um, the Windows uh, 10 version. You can download completely for free, the Evaluation Edition. Not that you're going to use it to install Windows, but you can use it to have the drivers and the first-time repair tools that Windows do offer. So I do recommend having that inside the CD-ROM tray as well. You might also be asked, depending on whether you go for the Import or the Create option, to select a location for the VM uh, files. You can choose wherever best suits you, but I recommend a home folder, just somewhere nice and accessible, and the amount of storage you want to dedicate. But if you're using a virtual machine image that you've created using the tools that we talked about today, chances are you've got to head over to the import VM where it will maintain the size and capacity of the virtual machine you've created. So now we've looked at those options, I'm just going to power up this VM here in the background. And while that boots up for the very first time in the background, I'm going to skip forward to the options here that we can look at inside our VM. Now, inside we've got the details with regards to the virtual machine we've created there, the network connections, the hard disk, the amount of size, there's the 42, uh, 477 gig from the image we created, along with a bunch of other options here where we can assign different values the VMs boot in there in the background. Now, it's worth highlighting that a virtual machine is just like a physical PC in that when you first boot it for the first time, you better have your fingers crossed. Because booting a PC for the first time as a fresh build, I refuse to accept that many of you people who have ever built PCs from scratch press that on button thinking it's definitely going to work 100% the first time when I press this button. There's always the error of doubt. And as you can see, the automatic repair is happening here in the background of our virtual machine right now in real time because we've included that Windows CD to ensure that the repair takes place. And that's really it. It's that straightforward to create a virtual image. We're going to fast forward now um, to the completion of the repair of Windows with that Windows CD happening to the virtual machine we're creating and then go to the deployment of this VM just to show you it in action and how it compares with the physical PC we're using right now. But do stay tuned for more updates from the likes of Nakivo and their guides because I found them invaluable for a number of the conversions that we've been doing over the last month or so, helping you guys work remotely. And I recommend you check them out along with the cloud apps that you get from QNAP's own app center. But let's fast forward to the completion of the automated repair of this virtual machine of my physical computer. So as you can see, our virtual machine has finished unpacking and is deployed. Let's make our way into it here. And I'll be to take a good look at the virtual machine itself. There it is in low res, because I'm on a wireless connection, but we can go to the display settings there, set it to high, and the fluidity should be a great deal smoother. Why don't we see how it compares with my existing desktop? As we can see, there's my desktop. And if we make our way back in, there is the virtual machine. So there's the virtual machine image there. That is the virtual equivalent of my physical PC. We can go in and go to the settings menu if we choose. Same goes on both of them. And what we'll do is we'll take a good look at what the system says each individual um, PC is running on. So there is the physical PC on the left-hand side of the screen. And in the virtual machine down here, 
have a look at system properties. We can take a good look and show you that these virtual machines are exactly the same machine. There we go. Although it is worth highlighting, as you can see, the CPU has changed quite remarkably there in between. And of course, the installed RAM has differed wildly. But a lot of that is, of course, to do with the virtual machine transition that we've been running. But I hope you guys have enjoyed this. This has been how to convert your virtual machine, uh, sorry, your physical machine into a virtual machine with a disk to VHD and a little bit of conversion along the way with Nakivo's guide there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. If you've got any questions about creating a virtual machine in your environment and whether you should be using a disk to VHD, VMware's converter, or any one of a number of Microsoft's own Hyper-V tools, then do let me know and ask me some questions in the comments via the NAS Compare link or directly via the other links to span.com but otherwise thank you so much for watching hope you've enjoyed this click like to if you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time